Hey everybody, as most of you know, I have been using Universal Audio stuff for a while. I really like Universal Audio because they are a company that allows you to bring the analog sound into the digital era where we're mixing entirely in the box on computers. And uh, most of you recently know that I got a satellite, which is their external box. If you haven't checked that out, um, take a look at my review of it that I did. I will we'll link it in directly to this video here. So you can just click on that and watch that later if you want to. But uh, today we are going to be doing a series on processing drums, percussion, and a few other things using Universal Audio plugins. And rather than giving you guys a cold kind of analytical, this button does this, this parameter does that kind of description, um, that's what the manual's for. I'm gonna instead give you a live demo of exactly how I would use it inside one of my tunes. So real life, practical, you know, ground level examples of actually how to use this stuff. So I will not be covering every parameter and every button and what it does. So um, this is not an exhaustive tutorial. However, I will be covering the practical applications of things in specific scenarios here. And uh, I think that you guys will get a much better, well-rounded understanding of how I use these tools and how you guys can use them inside your own production. So to kick things off, we've got uh, a track here that I'm in the middle of working on. This is by no means a completed track. This is a, a sketch, a work in progress. And uh, I wanted to give you guys a, a look inside one of my tunes here that I'm about to use a bunch of devastating Universal Audio plugins on. So I've just got a little section of it looped. Here's the tune, check it out. So as you guys can hear, the tune is pretty much all beats, bass, and a little bit of brass. So it's pretty basic arrangement, and we're going to get kicking off on the beats. So all of our beats in this tune are running in Ableton Live's drum rack instrument, which is a beautiful, fantastic, delicious, delicious piece of equipment that I just love. So um, I use it for all my beats. Here they are, laid out on a MIDI track, programmed with some MIDI. And uh, I'll let you guys have a listen to these so you can hear what's going on for beats. So a very basic drum pattern running with some kicks, some snares, some hi-hats. And uh, most of these actually came from Camel Audio's Alchemy Synth, which has a bunch of really super clean sounding percussion in it. So uh, big shout outs to Camel Audio for making Alchemy. And I've uh, basically taken these and resampled them out, made my own beat with it, and then added in some fatter samples using layers in the multi slots here. So um, the beats sound okay. They're, they have potential. They're a starting point. But um, as with a lot of sampled or synthesized beats, they sound kind of a little bit dull and lifeless. Uh, they need some character added to them. So I'm also noticing they don't sound quite as... as uh, punchy and um, attacky as I want. So we're going to actually start off with our snare and we're going to use the Universal Audio SPL Transient Designer on that to give the snare um, an envelope to it. So for those of you who haven't used a, a, a transient tool like Transient Designer um, before, it is a very, very, very sweet little piece of kit. So I'm just going to find my snare here, drop it on the end of the snare. Very simple plugin. It's one of the things I like a lot about the universal audio stuff is it's true to the hardware. You know, it's, it's dialed in with only a couple of different parameters, typically, unless it's a more complicated plugin. But this one you can see has, has basically three main parameters. It's got attack, sustain, and output gain. And transient shapers or transient designers are um, a way of adding an envelope to your percussion sounds that is different from using a compressor. I use this typically on kicks and snares. You can use it on other types of things, but I primarily use it in my production on percussion. So the very first thing we're going to do is turn up our attack to give the snare some more crack to the front end of it. I'll solo my snare so you guys can hear it. Now 
Now, one thing I will point out is it's got this little meter right here, which says overload OVL. And if that's hitting red, um, that's a characteristic for the hardware that's indicating that you're overloading the device. Now, Universal Audio has said that you can overload it and it won't cause any distortion. Um, that's probably true, but I never like to push the limits with plugins because I never like to run the risk of having any digital distortion, digital clipping. So you'll notice as well to preserve our ability to A-B test if we're actually making the sound better or just louder, we want to gain stage the output gain down. So I want to basically be able to completely bypass this plugin and tell if what the changes that I'm making are actually producing the desired result rather than tricking my ears into thinking that, oh, louder, it must be better. Great. So what this is doing is it's actually adding extra amplitude to the attack phase of the snare. Now we also have this sustain knob and the sustain knob will control the tail end of the sound, how long it is sustained for. And you'll notice when you listen to this snare, it's kind of got this uh, decay to it. It's got this little clank on the end. And I want to accentuate that, so I'm actually going to bring that out using the sustain knob, which will increase the amplitude of the tail end of our little snare here. So you can hear as I turn the sustain knob up, it's really getting aggressive on the back end, which is um, actually kind of what I want. So uh, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to gain stage it down because it's getting a little bit louder. And... Um, Yeah, that's about where I want it. Now, I want you guys to understand as well what is happening when you use this tool to the actual audio waveform. So directly underneath here, I've actually rendered out a little audio waveform of a couple of these snare hits run through different processors. So if I double click this, we'll be able to actually see the waveforms. So we have four snares here, all processed with different effects and different settings. So this first hit right here is the completely unaltered dry signal of our snare. The very next one over, this guy right here, is the snare when I turned up the attack knob. So you can see what it's doing is, is the tail end of it looks identical to the first one, but the initial transient is dramatically accentuated and it's added a lot of amplitude. This plugin has the ability to add up to 15 decibels to the initial attack phase if you turn the knob all the way up. So you can see we've added a lot of crack to the front end. The next hit over is also using the SPL transient designer. Same attack setting, but in this case, I've added some sustain to it. So you can see the back end of the note here is chubbier. You can see that little clank that comes along the end is accentuated. Here it's quite quiet, here it's quite quiet, here you can see the waveform fattens up. Now the last one here is done not using the SPL transient designer at all. This one is done using an 11, 1176 compressor and I wanted to show you guys the difference between compression and using the transient designer. Now the compressor, uh, this hit was created by using a, a very fast attack and very fast release setting and uh, a ratio of eight to one. So fairly heavy compression and more of a pumping style of compression. So you can see what it's done is it's fattened up the back end of the note as well. That's the quick release on the compressor, allowing the gain to come back up on the back end. So that's the pumping compression effect. But on the front end of the note, you can see it's actually clamped down quite a bit. You know, it's let the initial attack just through a bit, but then the rest of it is pretty much shaved off because of the high compression ratio. And um, in this case, what we could do is we could raise the volume of the note so the overall hit sounds a lot chubbier, but we are sacrificing attack. So actually a technique that I'm going to show you guys now is using these two in combination because I really like the cracky attack to the one that we've processed with the transient designer, but I like the chub and the fatness that comes out of the compressed version. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you guys using um, Universal Audio's 1176 compressor. Um, I'm going to show you a way to achieve the best of both worlds. But just before I do that, I'm going to let you guys hear these waveforms. So I'm just going to play through and you can listen to each one individually. <laughs> 